on this episode of Conversations with Rich Bennett. Yeah, school was difficult for me. I grew up in this little town in Vermont of like 250 people. So I was super insulated as a little kid. And then when I went to school, um, that's when it became really apparent that I was different. I didn't really know per se that I was different uh, because no one really gave me a hard time. But when I went to school, the kids gave me a hard time and picked on me. And um, But the good news is, is that we got over that. We got past that. The kids in my grade anyway. And um, I was, I'm so fortunate. You know, a lot of kids that are teased and bullied don't ever find connection with other kids. They, they tend to be loners and that leads to depression and all of that stuff. And for me, I actually found a core group of friends that was amazing. And, um, you know, some of them are still my friends today, honestly. And uh, yeah, so I'm really grateful, but I did experience a lot of teasing and bullying and all of that kind of stuff, which was really difficult as a young kid. Coming to you from the Freedom Federal Credit Union Studios, Harford County Living presents Conversations with Rich Bennett. Come on, you're faster than me. Guys, (laughs) oh man, you already said it. I was gonna ask her, she remembered the day. Thanks for joining the conversation where we explore the stories and experiences that shape our world. I'm your host, Rich Bennett, and today I am thrilled to welcome Marcy Langlois. Marcy is a coach, a podcaster, and a motivational speaker with an incredible story of resilience and transformation. And usually I would tell you a bit about the story in the introduction, but I don't want to do that. Because I feel like it would be better coming from Marcy. Let's. I, I do want to tell you one thing, though, and I ain't going to tell you why. Before the age of 18, 23 surgeries. So just keep that in mind. Before the age of eight, that's, God, that's, well, that's definitely one, more than one a year. Mm-hmm. Come to think of it. Hey, good. I'm good at math. <laughs> so. Nailing it, Rich. Nailing it. <laughs> How you doing, Marcy? <laughs> I'm great. Thank you. So great to be here with you today. Oh, my pleasure. So I, I told you before we started, when you sent me the message about coming on, I read, I read everything you wrote in there. It's like, oh my God, I have to have this young lady on because her story and just that little paragraph you sent me, her story is amazing already. So I want to go back, well, to the beginning, explain to everybody why you had to have 23 surgeries before 18. Yeah. So just to clarify, I had 23 surgical procedures that were nine major surgeries. So I, so they lumped them together. Like I would be under anesthesia for eight, nine hours at a time. And there would be a team of doctors that would operate on my entire face to get done what needed to be done so that we could minimize the number of times I would be under anesthesia. So my, I, I was born with a cleft lip and palate which means when your lip doesn't form all the way across and you have no roof of your mouth. And um, so that's how I came into the world. And I was, I'm 48 mm. now. So there was what? no, I know, right? Are, Crazy. Are you serious? I'm a hundred percent serious. Okay. Well, man, I really do suck at math. Cause I was thinking about 30. Oh no. Wow. <laughs> I think I'm in love. Um, <laughs> that's amazing. So Marcy's in love with Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> so the only reason I say my age is just simply to give you a perspective on time, right? When I was mm-hmm. born, no one knew that I was coming into the world like this. So right. when I came into the world uh, with my lip not formed correctly and no palate to my mouth, um, everyone was surprised. And, uh, so that required a lot of medical attention immediately. I, w- I was brought right. to the university hospital and spent the first seven days of my life there. And my first surgery <sighs> began at three months old. And my last one when, was when I was 18. And they just spanned throughout my lifetime as I grew and my body changed and transformed. Wow. So actually, isn't one of the 
I don't know if you watched Duck Dynasty or not. The Robertsons. Didn't one of their daughters go through that? I'm, I can't speak You're, to that. Okay, you don't sure. know. Okay. Yeah, I'm not uh, sure. Yeah, but, I, yeah, but I, I remember seeing an episode and they talked about how many surgeries. And that's as a kid, that's got to be so rough. Yeah, it's brutal. Well, a lot of my time was filled. If I wasn't having a surgery, then I was just – I was sick a lot as a child, right. really all of my life sick. And uh, so I was at the doctor's all the time, speech. I needed speech lessons until I was uh, in the fourth grade. Uh, so every week I went wow. to speech lessons to learn how to speak correctly. Um, I had braces on my teeth from the time I was in kindergarten until I was a senior in high school. Really? So, yeah. I was at the orthodontist constantly. Uh, so it was. I was always at the doctor's, dentist, ear, nose, throat specialist, speech lesson. Something was always wrong or going on with me. I'm afraid to ask this, and I'm probably going to get pissed off when you give me the answer and want to go clock some heads, but how was it during school for you? Yeah, school was difficult for me. I grew up in this little town in Vermont of like 250 people. Oh, so wow. I was super insulated as a little kid. And then when I went to school, um, that's when it became really apparent that I was different. I didn't really right. know per se that I was different because uh, no one really gave me a hard time. But when I went to school, the kids gave me a hard time and picked on me. And um, but the good news is, is that we got over that. We got past that. The kids in my good. grade anyway. And um, I was I'm so fortunate. You know, a lot of kids that are teased and bullied don't ever find connection with other kids. Mm -hmm. they, they tend to be loners and that leads to depression and all of that stuff. And for me, I actually found a core group of friends that was amazing. And, um, you know, some of them are still my friends today, honestly. And oh, uh, that's awesome. Yeah. So I'm really grateful, but I did experience a lot of teasing and bullying and all of that kind of stuff, which was really difficult as a young kid. Yeah, I, and I think today it's even worse, unfortunately, because of social media and everything. Um, I agree. But I, I just get so upset. And I remember as a young, you know, when I was younger, um, young kid with Down syndrome, and he was getting bullied. And I, of course, I got in trouble because yeah. I hit the kid that was bullying. It's like, no, you don't. It, 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 never mind. I told you I was going to get burnt up. <laughs> yeah, don't don't go down the rabbit hole. Yeah. Rich. Uh, so, uh, and while you were in school, because you're still going through all you know all these uh, surgical uh, you know, surgery and everything. Yeah. How were you able to focus? You know, because in high school they always tell you to focus on a career. What you want to do out of high when you get out? What did you want to do when you got out of high school? Or was that even in your head thinking about that? Yeah, I mean, high school was uh, difficult for me, but thankfully, I loved sports. I was an athlete growing up, and okay. that, was, that was my release and my outlet. And so it, my only goal when I went to high school really was to make the varsity basketball team. And so I trained and trained and trained to make the varsity basketball team as a freshman, and I did it. And nice. then, um, And then I – got sidetracked because I had started drinking drugs and I had started drinking and doing drugs um, oh. by this time to deal with the shame that I felt about who I was and where I came right. from and all the things. And um, so the coach and I didn't get along and that was the perfect excuse for me to quit basketball and, um, you know, start drinking and drugging. And I stayed playing softball and I love sports and they saved my life in so many ways. And yeah. as I was going through school, high school in particular, the surgeries really uh, sped up because I had stopped growing so they could do all the work. So I had my jaws broke twice in a row. Oh, um, Jesus. Yeah. And I had plates and screws put in and taken out and bone out of my hip and into my face and I mean, I went through it. My nose was reconstructed. And um, so then I couldn't play sports at all anymore. So 
drinking and drugging, all of this stuff. But I started applying for college, hoping uh, just to go to college and just start right. over, right? Start something new and different and whatever. And when I was doing that, uh, I got accepted into college. I thought I'd go to be a social worker. Honestly, that's what I wanted to do. Oh, wow. Um, and always the underdog, right? Always trying right. to lift the underdog. And um, so that was really what my focus was. And then I got in a really bad car accident in my senior year. Your senior year of high school? Yeah, my senior year of high school is January of my senior year. And I was on my way to my after school job. And um, unfortunately, this this accident was horrendous and um, three people lost their lives that day. Oh God. Um, <sighs> yeah. And that's still, you know, that's still tender for me to talk about today. Yeah. Um, I can imagine. And uh, so that changed the rest of my life. Right. I was never the same person again. Yeah. Um, I felt responsible for the accident, even though I wasn't legally uh, at fault in any way. Mm -hmm. And I had not been drinking or drugging, which is a lot of what people ask a lot. So I just want to be clear about that. I had, right. I was not high in any way. I was on my way to work. And, um, so, um, I struggled big time after that. I had P PTSD. Um, oh, I bet. yeah. And, uh, I had a lot of things going on and every day I woke up and I really, I just wanted my life to be over. Uh, oh. I didn't feel like I could, I deserved the air that I was breathing. And, um, a lawsuit was in progress for the next four years of my life because these lives were lost. And, um, oh. it was, it was just really difficult. And so, you know, mm -hmm. like in any good fashion, like an addict would do, I really went for it. You know, I started drinking and drugging every single day of my life because it was the only thing I knew to uh, help alleviate escape. Yeah. The emotional pain I was experiencing. So if you don't mind me asking, because you, you started the drugs and drinking when you were in high school. Yeah. Middle school, really. Middle, middle, good Lord. Yeah. Um, do you with all the surgeries and everything you went through and I'm sure they were giving you medication, right? Mm -hmm. No. Do you No. No, I didn't. It made me so sick. So oftentimes I would just take the minimal, whatever they were giving me. And as soon as I could do without it, I stopped taking it or I didn't take it at all. Okay. So you didn't start the drugs and everything because of that. No. From the medication. Okay. No. Okay, so what came first, the drugs or the alcohol? The alcohol. The alcohol. Okay. And if you don't mind me asking, what's the heaviest drug that you were taking at the time? Uh, so I stayed away from all methamphetamines. So no cocaine, Good. no uppers, Good. because right. I knew it would kill me because uh, yeah. I knew I was an addict at a very early age. So I did everything else. I liked the fun stuff. Like I would eat, you know, pills and hang out. And mm -hmm. uh, I loved MDMA and acid and mushrooms and marijuana and uh, really anything I could get my hands on as long as it wasn't speed. Right. Now, how, how long was it? I, I take it you went into recovery later? I did. I got clean and sober 10 years after the accident. And 10 I years after the accident. Yeah, I've been clean and sober now for 21 years. 21 years? Yeah, 21 years. Wow, no that is no awesome. Yep. That Oh, God, that is great. So with <laughs> – because this is, this is something I, I, I we talked beforehand. Um, to me, and I don't know if you do this or not, but since you're in recovery, do you actually talk to other people in recovery as well? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Do you find that, and we've mentioned this several times, but do you find that the recovery circle or family, whatever you want to call it, is bigger and seems to have your back more than, let's say, the addiction circle? And do you know, you know the difference I'm talking about, right? Oh, yeah. Um, okay. Yes. I think so uh, for a lot of reasons. But yes, mm -hmm. I... I 
I, that's what I hear. I've never been in the addiction recovery community. Or wait, you're talking about the addict. You're talking. All about right. So, the- so when you're doing drugs, yeah, yeah, that circle is big because drugs are oh. everywhere. Yes, yes, yes. But they don't give a shit about you. Not one bit. But once you get into recovery, it it's like a family, and it's like everybody has everybody's back. Yeah, they're my people. Yeah. Yeah, and it's I one of the things, and we've talked about this before. One of the things I love is how people are coming out and talking about it and breaking the stigma. But what pisses me off is some people out there. Uh, a prime example: um, we had in our community there was somebody. I don't like the term halfway house. I like the term recovery home. That once yeah. a open up a recovery home and some of the people living around there are up in arms about it, complaining, you know, we don't want a bunch of addicts here. It's going to lower, lower the value of the properties. And they're wrong. It's, I think it's the other way around. You know, right. when people are in recovery, number one, you, you don't want the, the drugs and everything aren't going to be there. Right. You know, you, I found from what I, from meeting people, I can trust them more than some other people. Yeah, you know, it's just, it's, I'm, I don't know. It's amazing. It is. It's just, it's some of the, it's weird to say, but it's some of the greatest people I have ever met. And I think it's because when you're in addiction or when you're, let's say when you're, when you're taking, you, you're a totally different person. You're not yourself. But yeah, when you're in recovery, I think you're more honest. You, uh, the real you is finally coming out. A lot of people say when you're drinking, the real you is coming out. I don't believe that at all. I think when you're in recovery, the real you is coming out because you're finally finding yourself. That's right. At least that's what I believe. <laughs> I I agree with you a whole a hundred percent. And the thing is, is that in order to stay clean and sober, you have to become a different person. Yeah, the, the same person will will drink again or use again. Uh, you you can't you can't just stop using. You literally have to change everything about your life, or you'll go back to mm-hmm. using because that's why you were using to begin with. So when you went into well, let's go back. How many years of recovery now? Twenty one. Twenty one. Yep. Twenty one. Okay. So. Did you leave that job before you went into recovery or were you sh- still there? Oh yeah. That was my high school job. So okay. yeah, by the time I got clean and sober, I was a mortgage banker at that time. And you did something awesome in that field, didn't you? Yeah. Yes, I did. Tell everybody I, what you did. Uh, I've been in the top 1% uh, in mortgage bankers across the country uh, in wow. terms of uh, production and volume for the last like 10 years. To, for the last 10 years? Yeah. Probably couldn't have done that if you were still doing, right? No, not a chance, Rich. Not a chance. So top, top 1% in the country? Yep. That's amazing. Damn, yeah, I, congratulations. I think that, that, I think they ought to give you like a $100,000 bonus or something. <laughs> Thanks, Rich. I'll let him know. <laughs> give me, give me the boss's number. I'll talk to him. Right. I'll get him on the phone right now. I'll say, "Look, Marcy's kicking ass. Take care of her." I love <laughs> so. it. Thanks for getting my back, Rich. <laughs> so, and you're still there now? Yeah, I still do some mortgage banking. Yes, I do. Okay, but you're do also doing something else now, right? Yeah, I've started a coaching business, which. Eventually, that's going to become your full-time job, I believe. Yeah, yeah. We're not far off, I don't think. Really? Yeah, yeah. So, how long have you been doing that now? Um, Really, uh, I've been a coach for, you know, as long as I've been in the mortgage business. That's what I've been doing is coaching people. Essentially, that's that's okay. what, that's the skill set you use, you know, and um, that's how I've done so well at it is by just really trying to put everybody else's intentions first, right? It's like right. what's best for them and how do I get them from where they are to where they want to be? And so um, 
this is just my thing. I love helping people. And so I've been coaching uh, Living Beyond Limits now. I'm trying to think. Um, I got my first client. I think it was about this time last year. I think it was actually August of last year. Okay, so and now we're gonna, it's growing. You're going to end up making this a full time business. But you also, it's not just where you're at. You could talk to people anywhere, right? Coach people anywhere. Oh yeah, absolutely. So if somebody says, "Man, Marcy's really good. I want to get her as a coach." How do they get you as a coach? Uh, they can visit my website, uh, marcylangloys.com. We'll put all of that in the show notes. You um, will. I hope so. Rich. I'm messing with you. Of course I will. I hope so. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, so we'll do that. And what I do is I just um, offer people a free consultation with me to see mm -hmm. if we're the right fit. Because if we're not and I don't feel like I can help you, then I don't want to take your money. I, I want to make sure that you get with who you should be with. And I have, I have some sort of particular people that I'm looking to work with people who have been doing work and feel really stuck people who are chronically ill and feel like there's no hope. Um, those people who have been in therapy, but can't seem to get to the root of what the problem is. Um, right. those are my people, uh, because I found myself stuck there, you know, personally, and then mm -hmm. I figured out how to undig. And so basically that's what I'm teaching people is, is the methods that I've used. I love that. The fact that you are, you'll only take on certain people because a lot of people that'll do it, they're, they'll take anybody on because they're thinking about the money they yeah. want it, but you want it to, because you truly want to help people. And 100%. I have to applaud, I have to applaud you for that. That is awesome. And you mentioned the chronically ill, um, but I want to save that for the, end of this because i want to talk about something else that you're doing okay. and there, those of you listening um whatever platform you're listening on also search for the podcast living beyond limits because that's a podcast that marcy does and when did you actually start that and why oh i started that about a year ago too um and i started it with the whole intention of trying to give information away, like trying to mm -hmm. help people help themselves. So, you know, you don't have to have a budget to listen to a podcast, right? You can have right. no money on your budget. You can just tune in and listen. So every episode is just me talking a short episode, usually around 10 ish minutes. I pick a topic and at the end of each uh, segment, I give you three actionable, at least three actionable steps that you can take to transform your life to oh, wow. how, how you can overcome that specific struggle and work through it. And I'm just looking through some of the titles uh, or some of the episodes. Um, and, uh, well, I take it. This has got a lot to do with your, your business as well, especially your latest episode, your trauma doesn't define you how to reclaim your purpose after trauma, which that is, a lot of people don't know how to. That's right. <laughs> uh, so that, that's definitely one episode. Well, people, you got to listen to all the episodes. One episode I do want to talk to you about, though. Okay. And you did it. <laughs> Explain this one. The, the episode was titled, Don't Fall Victim to This Mindset. Do you remember that episode? Yeah, Don't Fall Victim to This Mindset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, victim. Is it the victim yeah. mindset, I think? Yes. Yeah. yeah, explain that because I mean, people always you hear people say you got to change your mindset, mm -hmm. but explain don't fall victim to this mindset. Yeah, that's a great question. So here's the story, right? So my whole life, you know, I had all the surgeries, um, mm -hmm. all these things, right? My dad was an alcoholic. We had no running water and no electricity for a while. We had we had a mess, is what we had going on, right? And in, in the midst of all of this stuff, I was trying to deal with who I was and what I had going on. Right. And so right. you're listening to the conversations with Rich Bennett. We'll be right back. 
Are you tired of drafty windows and high energy bills? Of course you are. We all are. Well, look no further than Window Depot of Baltimore. Their energy efficient windows will not only save you money, but they'll also enhance the look and feel of your home. Their experienced team will provide top notch installation and customer service, ensuring your satisfaction. So don't wait any longer to upgrade your home. Contact Window Depot of Baltimore today. Again, that's Window Depot of Baltimore. Go to windowdepotofbaltimore.com or give them a call at 410-941-3499. Again, that's 410-941-3499. Tell them Rich sent you. By the time I started drinking, I started feeling sorry for myself. That's just the truth, right? Like, Mm -hmm. oh my God, look at my life. And I've had all these surgeries and the kids have picked on me. And I had a whole running dialogue of why I felt sorry for myself. And then after the car accident, I really felt sorry for myself. Like, oh my God, I made it all the way through that. And then this happened, right? And what that did was it gave me permission to seek out unhealthy coping mechanisms to deal with being a victim. Right. See, my own story kept me stuck. Mm. My own story kept me drinking. My own story kept me sick physically. And so if I had not been a victim and if I would have just acknowledged that life is life Mm -hmm. and that, yes, it's painful and we go through traumatic things and you have to deal with them. Not dealing with stuff is not an option. You can, you try it out. Let me know how it works. But I'm going to tell you, usually it's going to get you one way or the other. Right. And so you have to face your stuff and I'm not proposing that you don't, but being a victim disempowers you immediately. You have no choices. You're helpless and hopeless. Right. So if you can transform your victim mindset into a place of empowerment, then Mm -hmm. you can move forward in your life and actually transform your life experiences from painful and suffering actually into meaning and purpose. Mm, Okay. Now, I, I love asking this question, whether it comes to the podcast or with you coaching, um, Can you share a feel-good story from somebody that you've helped? Yeah, 100%. So my um, coaching client currently that I'm working with uh, is this wonderful woman who completely fits the mold of what I'm looking for and um, has been in recovery for a long time, therapy for a long time, but is still having all these issues in other ways in her life, finances, relationships, and so on. And she's like, I don't get it. Like, I don't understand. And so it's like, okay, well, let's work together and start uncovering this. So in four weeks time, we got to the bottom of where she was stuck, right? Exactly where she was stuck. And it Mm -hmm. was early trauma, childhood trauma, But we were able to pinpoint it. And uh, my last call with her, I have one today, actually, I can't wait. But my last call with her was her crying, telling me how grateful she is for the work that we've done together, that she cannot believe how it has transformed her life in just a short four weeks, that she stopped trolling dating sites for men that are unavailable and pretty much abusive, right? Right. Um, She has changed her eating patterns. She's exercising every day because it makes her feel good. Mm -hmm. She's sleeping better. She's starting to deal with her finances. But most of all, she like has peace. She has this peace that is indescribable, she says. How much Kleenex did you go through? I was so excited. I didn't cry uh-huh. at all. Right? I didn't cry at all. I was so excited. Tears and of happiness, Marcy. Tears of happiness. I know. I was I was pumped for days. Like I'm so excited for her. It's so transformational. It, it, I just love hearing those things because that when you even if it's just one person that you help, 
you're making a difference. And that's just one story out of, God, several that you have. Uh, But it's just, oh, God, I love to hear that stuff. And with the podcast, if you haven't heard that yet, I'm sure you will. Um, One of the greatest rewards that I've gotten from doing this is when somebody calls me and thanks me for an episode that they've heard um, because it, it helped them. Yes. And it ain't, it's not me that's helping them. It's my guest that's helping them. Right. You know, because it, the sh- it's not, the show just has my name, but it's you, you know, and sure, everybody sure. else that comes on. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, if you haven't gotten that yet, you will. And it's, it, it's very rewarding. How long, because you what drop, is it once a week for your podcast? Yeah, right now I'm on hiatus because I'm out interviewing on everybody else's shows, but I had... Oh, go ahead and brag about it, Marcy. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I know you've been trying to do it and you can't, you haven't been able to break away because you're so busy. But then I wouldn't have met you. I know. See, it's See? all worth it. That's right. It's all worth That's it. Right. So I, I've stopped. I'm on a hiatus. I'll get back to it. Um, but... Yes, I was dropping a show a week, so I have like, I don't know, 36, 37 episodes. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of material that you can just go back and listen to that's all still very relevant. So Yeah. So, and that's the one great thing about podcasting. You can you, you can put out evergreen content, and you can take a break. Right. You know, and then come back and start up again. Right. Uh, I, I, I've taken a, a couple <laughs> breaks before. <laughs> <laughs> Although I feel lost when I do. I think my last break I took, I may have taken one over the holidays and during Christmas. I can't remember. That I, means you need it, to take one sooner than later, Rich. It's been too long. But I love doing this. I know. I do. See, and here's here's the funny thing. We'll, like, like we're recording today. Then when I go to edit this, I listen to it all over again. And I'll pick up on stuff that I didn't pick up while while we were sitting here having the conversation sure you totally. know, and then, and, and, which is why sometimes i'll have guests back on again right yeah you know, and, and still forget to ask the question that's to my head at the time. Totally. So, now do you actually is your podcast also video or is it, is it a true podcast just audio no audio video it is audio and video yep oh okay so you're not like me you don't break cameras i do <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> um, something you mentioned with your clients, the chronically ill, yeah. and we talked about this before we started. Uh, explain mm-hmm. to everybody why y- you like to uh, help people that are chronically ill. Yeah. So I have been chronically ill all of my life. I've I've mm-hmm. really never been well since I was born, and. Um, Today, I feel the best that I've ever felt in my life at almost 50 years old. And um, it's because I've learned how to heal my body. So the thing is, is uh, with chronic illness, where I got to is my body was not detoxing at all because I was living in a constant state of fear and stress. I was literally in a chronic state of stress from all the trauma that I had experienced in my life, even though I was in therapy for 20 years and Mm -hmm. doing all of the things to heal myself, uh, what had not changed was my thinking. My thinking was still in that survival mode that I grew up in and I had become accustomed to. And so what ended up happening three and a half years ago is I I had like five uh, viruses that had become chronic in my body and I could not shake them. A couple five? of five. Yes, I had two bacterial infections that were systemic, and I had three viral infections. And um, yeah, I was a mess, and uh, I was wow. so sick. And but I was working like a fool and uh, continuing to keep my body in that chronic state of stress. And my body finally said no more in February of 2021. And, uh, I basically, my whole system freaked out. And so I ended up with mast cell activation syndrome and histamine intolerance, which really? are, um, life threatening if left unattended because they lead to anaphylaxis. So, um, 
very scary. It affects uh, mast cell activation syndrome affects every system in your body. So all the systems literally go haywire in your body and your brain starts firing all the neurotransmitters because oh your nervous system thinks that it's completely under attack. And when I say under attack from everything, it can be a smell in the air to uh, the thoughts that I was thinking literally. Wow would create a, an allergic reaction. My own thoughts would create an allergic reaction in my body. So uh, it was it was dire and I was bedridden for 40 days. And 40 um, days? Yeah, 40 days, <laughs> 40 days. It was no wow. joke. And um, I had three day stints where I almost died and um, it felt like I was dying for sure. But it was during COVID and I could not go to oh, the geez. hospital because if I went to the hospital in this condition I was in, I was a goner for sure. Yeah. So I uh, didn't call 911 and I stayed in my bed and I, I got it. I figured it out in, the, in that moment. So I had spent 40 days in bed and I started seeing the relationship between the way that I thought and what happened in my body. So if... If my if I started looking at my phone and started thinking about work and my business that I had worked so hard to create and that I was going to mm-hmm. lose, then the, I was having head to toe body tremors and tremors in my brain. And if I started thinking about work, then the tremors would increase literally like times 10. If wow. I could stop thinking about work and I could just focus on some mindless show on Netflix and right. calm myself down then the tremors were like 50% and they were kind of like manageable. They were still awful and terrible, but they were manageable. So I realized the connection between the mind and the body. I've read about this forever and always thought it was so fascinating, but I literally experienced it. And in that moment, when I got that, when I was staring death in the eye and I knew there was nothing I could do. It didn't matter how much money I made, how many accolades I got, how many times I was 1% in the country. It, none of it mattered. Right. I was going to die. And I couldn't do anything to change any of it. So I started thinking like, okay, well, if I live, then I'm never going to live like that again. And mm-hmm. I'm going to change my entire life. And I'm going to love the people that I want to love. And I'm going to be ab- intentional about the way I live. And I'm going to start changing the way that I think. And that was the beginning. And I went on to literally heal my own body. Today, I don't have anything. I don't have any viruses. I don't have any bacterial infections. I don't have mast cell activation. I don't have histamine intolerance. My blood work is perfect. I have nothing. And I did it by using the power of my mind and what I think and tell myself based on the beliefs that I think and feel and meditating and learning how to regulate my nervous system. Right. Wow. That's amazing. And that's what you described at first before you actually said the word meditating is, I guess, a type of meditating. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm glad you said that because a lot of people don't realize the power of meditation and Mm -hmm. how it can help you heal. That's right. And one of the things that you'll hear people say it all the time. Either they don't have time to meditate, bullshit, excuse my language, or they don't know how to meditate. Yeah. It's not that hard to learn. Mm-hmm. Not that hard to learn. And a lot of people think, you you know, you have to be sitting down, cross-legged and all that. You were doing it while lying in bed. That's right. I mean, that that is amazing. And I know you're teaching that with your coaching, right? That's right. <laughs> God, man. So the lady that you got the phone call with today. Yeah. Is that is that one of the things that you taught her? Yeah, we, yes, we have done a lot of work and we're slowly building our way up to that. That is great. God, yeah. I'm sorry, Marcy. I know it was hard, but you're going to have to end up writing a, not a book. I want to say a book. I would say a guide. Sure. Because if you could teach other people to do that, oh my God, think of all the lives you're going to be saving. That's my aim, I mean, Rich. That's my aim. Well, you're already doing it. Well, not yeah. the book, but you're doing it with the podcast and the coaching. Yeah, absolutely. You 
which is awesome. Oh, God. Wow. I'm glad you told me that because I had no idea. And I'm going to have to tell my sister to listen to this episode because it may, what you talked about, it may have been what she had. She, I'm not good at these medical names, but she yeah. kept getting a rash and couldn't figure out what it was. And one doctor finally realized she was allergic to herself. And I guess oh, yeah. that's basically what it is. Similar to what you were saying. You were. Yep. You go, wow. Wow. Man. So what is, what is next for Marcy? Well, I'm very spiritual. So I believe that whatever is meant to be is unfolding before me. I just keep mm -hmm. showing up and I have lots and lots of really big interviews coming up. Obviously your show is huge. So this is an incredible opportunity oh, well, for me you. to become more well-known. And um, that's really what I'm trying to do, you know, is just for, to get my message out, right. That there's hope no matter how mm -hmm. bad it seems, no matter what depths of despair you go to, that there's always hope. And that um, you can heal your body, that people can heal their body. You don't, the doctor, the whatever, you don't, you don't have to always go that route. Or if you right. feel desperate and you're not getting any answers, there's a way through. The body knows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's the thing. If if you if you feel like something's wrong, then look into it because you know your body better than anybody else. That's right. And if you can't find somebody, if you can't figure out what's wrong, or or if you do figure out what's wrong or whatever you're trying is not working, get a hold of Marcy because she she'll coach you. And I, God, that is. Mm. I, I'm sorry, but that just blows me away. I love that. That and, and think about it, because if it wasn't during COVID, you probably would have gone toward, towards the, or to the hospital, right? I don't know. I'm not okay. sure. I don't know. I, I gave up Western medicine probably about 20 ish years ago because my body couldn't tolerate it anymore. I couldn't take right. drugs, pharmaceuticals, uh, literally at all. And they didn't help me either. So I, I went to a natural, uh, a naturopathic doctor like 20 years ago and I've been na into natural medicine for the last 20 years. And, um, really, yeah. So I don't know if I would have went to the hospital. I don't know though. It was pretty dire and I was pretty terrified. So I yeah. may have, I may have, I was scared. Something tells me you're like me too. You got to be like even in severe pain before you even pop a Motrin. Yeah. I don't touch. I can't take any of that stuff. Really? No, I can. I literally cannot take any of that stuff at all. My system all right. is so sensitive. All right, so oh, now this is interesting. So it, let's say you have a headache. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what do you do to help that? Well, one, I never have a headache. But oh, two, can, you know, show off. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I I have a very. I I eat very clean. I'm fully vegan. I only drink water. I, I'm really thoughtful about what I put in my body. Uh, so mm -hmm. I don't have a lot of stuff like that. But if I, if something shows up, uh, I work with myself, right? The, mm -hmm. what's going on in the body. So the ache in your elbow is a message from the body. The ache in the mm -hmm. elbow is not showing up there to ruin your day. The ache in the elbow is your body trying to tell you that you need to pay attention. The headache is something in your body telling you that you need to pay attention. There is, there's deeper work there that needs to be done. It's not happening by accident. It's, it's trying to communicate with you and tell you that th there's stuff that needs to be addressed. Right. I need to get back to meditating more. There you go, Rich. Yeah. It, it, no, it's funny that you, you, when you said that, I'm, I'm sitting here rubbing my hand because for some reason I just have this pain on my left palm. Can mm -hmm. I figure out where it came from? It's like a little bump there. It's like, and then when you said this, like, you know what? I, I've talked to people all the time. Well, not all the time. Sometimes about this, about focus. If you focus, let me make sure I say it right. Focus on the pain to make it go away. 
Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah, you can. Absolutely. Or just where your where your energy where your attention goes is where the energy flows, right? So yeah. Yes. All right. So people listening, you need to be like me. I got I got to get in touch with when I find time. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Marcy, help! Here I. Am. <laughs> and then you, you know you know you're gonna have to come back on i want to get you on again for there's so many things i could talk to you about sure, um sure. but your your story is just simply amazing one question i do want to ask you though before i get to my last question yeah are you able to do sports anymore and and if so are you I don't play competitively, but like right. I have a, I have a basketball in the back of my car and I'll just stop at the park and shoot hoops. You know, like my, my younger cousin just came for a visit. She brought her softball glove. We threw the ball. Um, right. you know, like, yeah, all those kinds of things. I walk every single day. I lift weights, you know? Yes. I very much am into taking care of my body. Good. Yeah. Pickleball. I don't play pickleball. Everybody asks me, but I have everybody I know has gotten hurt at pickleball. So I'm like, ah, I'm too competitive, yeah. and I'll. Kill I haven't myself. tried it either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I haven't tried it either. But the hardest sport that, I, although I gotta admit, we did is a few weeks ago we were playing baseball and kickball, and it was hotter than Hades out there. Yeah, I was all excited, even though I was hurting afterwards, because I figured. Man, I'm going to lose some weight. <laughs> yeah, that, was a myth. that didn't work. <laughs> oh, Rich, that's funny. <laughs> so, Marcy, is there anything you would like to add before I get to my last question? There's nothing I can think of. I think we covered a lot of territory. Well, tell everybody your website to get in the podcast. Oh, it's uh, MarcyLanglois.com, and my podcast is called Living Beyond Limits. She's on hiatus right now, so that gives you all enough time to binge yeah. and listen to all the episodes before she starts back to doing it. Okay, so you've you've been a guest on several podcasts. Yes. Is there anything that a host has never asked you that you wish they would have asked you or something that you wanted to say but never had the opportunity to, um, but something that you've never asked you, so what would be that question? What would be your answer? Or what would be the message you would like to give everybody? Well, Rich, you may have stumped me here. Um, no. I don't know. I mean, the, my, my message is always the same, right? Like, mm -hmm. um, the, the pathway... The pathway to healing, all healing, it doesn't matter what you're healing from, is self-love. You have to learn to love yourself. And that is a job within itself. But when a person can learn to love themselves, then uh, there are no bounds. Everything mm -hmm. becomes uh, achievable at that point. The only person that is standing in your way currently is you. Um, the, you know, that is the truth that I know. And that is yeah. my message, you know, however I say it a thousand and one different ways, but really that is the heart the of my message. I love it. Marcy, I want to thank you so much. It, it's been an honor and, um, God, people again, make sure you listen to her podcast. You will be hearing from her again, because I'm going to be coming up with something that she's going to have to come back on for. So <laughs> Marcy, thank you. Thanks so much for having me, Rich. I want to thank my guests for coming on this episode, but I really want to thank you for listening. And I would really appreciate it if you left a review about the show or about this episode. And you can actually do that right from the website. Go to conversationswithrichbennett.com. You can leave a comment about this episode. You can leave a review for the podcast in general. Another thing I would love for you to do of course, follow us on social media, but send me a voicemail. If there is somebody you want me to get on the show, if you want to come on the show, if there is something you would like for us to discuss, send a voicemail or send an email. If you send a voicemail, if you want, I can actually play it back on the show too. So just saying, uh, but no, seriously, I, I want to thank you for listening because if it wasn't for you, the podcast wouldn't be as successful as it is. 
So from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much. So I am sitting here today. I have a young lady on that is a very talented photographer, Emily Adolph. And she's got something very special, especially if you run a nonprofit. Oh, she's got something special for you. But if you just need photography in general, you want to get a hold of her. So how are you doing, Emily? I'm doing good, Rich. Thank you for having me on today. Oh, my pleasure. Tell us what it is that you are, this special that you're running. Yeah. so Special from, for special people because you're special, right? <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So <laughs> what I'm offering is free photography services to nonprofits here in Harford County. And mm-hmm. um, initially I was running it from now until the end of June, but what I've decided to do is extend it out. Um, so now I'm right. offering it from now until um, the end of August. So until August 31st, that, that, you know, weekend um, figured, you know, it's a, it's a busy time of year season for mm-hmm. you know, nonprofits having events in the summertime. Um, but yeah, really just want to support, help nonprofits capture, you know, moments and, and the, um, experiences of the events that they're hosting without having to, you know, worry about funding the photographer. Right. Um, so yeah, that's just a little bit about, you know, what I'm, I'm giving back to the community. Which is great because a lot of your nonprofits don't take photos of their events yeah. and they should be on their websites. I agree. You I know, agree. even for upcoming events, you know, it's nice if you had the photos from last year to, to ask, Hey, look, this is what we're doing. This is how good it is. Yeah. And also, but you also do other types of photography in case somebody wants to hire you, right? I do. Yeah, I do portraits, families, event, you know, other events, musicians, bands. Those are my my key focuses. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And how does somebody hire you? How do they get in touch with you? Yeah, they would just go to my website. So it's www.emilyadolf.com. So that's E M I L Y A D O L P H dot com. Well, first of all, thank you for doing that because that's awesome. Thank and you. especially now, for, a lot of your nonprofits are struggling yeah. because you're just like all of us, inflation's hitting them hard. Yep. You know, and you have, you know, some venues around that shut down. So some of them are struggling to find a place. And yep. here you are reaching out to help. And for those of you that don't know about Emily, this is, Emily just loves to help people out. Yeah, I do. So. Help her out as well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, hire her for your photography needs. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Emily. Thanks, Rich.